Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. At the moment, I am working my way through a copy of Cursed City, and the intention with this particular project is to paint it as much as possible using only speed paints from the new Army Painter speed paints range. However, part of using the speed paint system does involve using a good base coat, and they usually recommend you use a matte white Army Painter spray primer. Today, I'm going to be painting up the Vargscar, the biggest and most imposing miniature from Cursed City, and rather than working from a solid white base coat, I have first sprayed it with a matte black primer, and then I have oversprayed that with the matte white. It's a bit more than a zenithal highlight, but we have still left a lot of that black primer in the deepest recesses of the miniature. And the plan here is just to paint up this Vargscar as quickly as possible, while still hopefully making it look half decent. So once our primers are dry, the first thing we want to deal with is the skin of the Vargscar. And to do that, I wanted a purple tone, but I was a bit concerned that if I just applied a neat purple, it would be too purple. So I don't know if it's going to achieve anything, but I'm going to add in just a dash of Crusader skin. This is basically working out about four parts purple to one part Crusader skin. And then I'm going to mix those two colours and apply this over all of the skin areas. And as we're applying it to the skin areas, we want to be careful not to get it too much over the fur. A little bit of overspill isn't a problem, and in fact it can be beneficial because it can help to blend the two areas, the skin tone and the fur tone. But as much as possible, we want to be quite neat about this. We also want to avoid as much as possible getting it on the claws. But again, a small amount of overspill is not a problem because that will help with the blending later. So we're applying one coat of this purple over all of these skin areas. That includes these little vestigial wing things, the stretched skin along the arms, the backs of the hands, the fingers, the legs, and of course the face and ears. And because the purple is going over white areas and dark areas for the base coat, we are getting some differences in the texture and the tone of the skin there. Next, we're going to move on to Gravelord Grey. We don't need to wait for that skin tone to dry. We can move straight onto this, and we are applying the Gravelord Grey over all of the fur areas. My idea for the fur is to have a blackish brown colour. It's going to be brown, but almost black in the deepest recesses. But I felt that just applying brown directly onto the miniature at this point, I would get something that was too brown. So I'm going for an alternative method here. I'm first coating all of the fur with the Gravelord Grey. I could have used Grim Black instead, but I think over the darker base coat anyway, black would have been too excessive. So I've gone for the grey here, and we're going to coat all of the fur with this. And again, we want to avoid overspill onto the skin as much as possible, but a small amount isn't a problem because it will help just to blend that purple into the black. This is an organic creature. This is something where you would see bits of skin through the fur. You would see that element of those different colors. For most of this miniature, you don't need to wait for each coat to dry, but for this next stage, you do. That Gravelord Grey does need to be left to dry only for 10 or 15 minutes, but just enough so that we can then dry brush it with matte white. This is the matte white from the Army Painter range. And what I'm doing here is not a really heavy dry brush, but on the most raised parts of the fur, I want to brighten it up because we are going to apply a brown in a moment and I want the brown to really hit on those highest areas of the fur. By putting down the white dry brush, I'm just going to help that brown lift away from the darker tones underneath. So we're being careful here, making sure we don't get it over the skin. And like I said, it's not a big heavy dry brush. We only want to do a little bit on the highest areas of the fur. And really we don't want to touch the stuff on the chest at all, because that is in a shaded part of the miniature. It's in shadow. You wouldn't really see those high notes of color. The brown fur would look more black. And I know that some people have been worried about reactivation when they're using speed paints. So far, I have done quite a lot of dry brushing over the top of speed paints, and it's never been a problem so far. And also, I haven't necessarily left the paint for very long periods of time. As I said here, this was about 15 minutes of wait time from applying the Gravelord Grey to doing the dry brush. Next, we're going to use dark wood, and we can apply this pretty much immediately because we did a dry brush, the paint dries very, very quickly. And all we're doing here is we're not coating the whole areas of the fur, we're only coating the areas where we have done that dry brush, because then the brown will take to those white areas and you will get those little high notes of brown in amongst the gray black fur. 
So we're just going to work all over the whole miniature, hitting all those dry brushed areas. And what we should be left with is a nice dark fur with little notes of brown that show through. And while we have our dark wood out, we're also going to paint our little rat friend on the base. This is just a single coat over the rat's body. And when I did the dry brushing of the fur, I should really have done this step as well, but I completely forgot. You will need to dot in the eyes and just line in the teeth as well. Again, be wary of reactivation. I have never had a problem doing touch-ups like this, putting the matte white over a speed paint, but make sure you're using a light touch with your brush. You can water the paint down, but don't water it too much. And just be a bit cautious. And then once that's dry, we can get the pallid bone on and we're going to apply pallid bone over the claws, over the talons, over any bony protrusions on the miniature, including the teeth. And because the talons have areas of black from the black primer, areas of white from the white primer, and then also small amounts of purple from when we were painting the skin, you will get some nice variation in the coloration on the claws. So they won't just look like a solid mass of bone, they will look dirty, they will look dingy, but they will look like they've got highlights where light is touching them on certain areas. Next, of course, we do just want to put a bit of Crusader skin on that rat's tail. And then we're switching to blood red and we're just going to dot that in over the whites of the eyes. Still not waiting for anything to dry, we're moving straight on to Gravelord Grey and we're going to paint the little elements, the scenic elements on the bases. There's this broken gravestone and a little rock that the rat is leaping over. And again, because we have used the black and the white for the primer, we will get darker shading in the recesses and we will get different variations in the tones of the coloration. So it's a different finish to if we were just applying this directly over matte white. And once we've done that, we are finished with speed paints on this miniature. And this is our finished result. All I've done afterwards is I have used a Sterling Mud texture paint on the base. I've lined the base with Lead Belcher because I'm doing that with all of my big villains. And that is job done. I have briefly considered going back and dry brushing the fur again just to get an extra highlight on there. But that wasn't really the point of this series. I was trying to paint as much as possible using only speed paints. So I'm not going to do that in this video. But it is something that you can do if you would like to take your miniatures on another stage again. And I think some people will look at this Vark Scar and say, yeah, it needs a bit more, it needs this, it needs that. But I think when I first started painting, if I had very quickly been able to paint something that looked this nice, I would have been very, very pleased. If I had been able to paint something that looked this nice in less than 15 minutes, not including the drying time, then I would have been absolutely delighted. All I need to do now is spray it with Army Painter Matte Varnish, and then when that's dry, apply a small amount of static grass to the base for a little bit more detail, and that miniature is completely finished. But while I have your attention, I do just want to show you a few other things regarding Army Painter Speed Paints and painting up my copy of Cursed City. First of all, I just want to show you this little gravestone. You get a couple of these in Cursed City, and I painted these up in less than three minutes. I didn't even wait for each paint to dry. I particularly wanted to draw attention to the little gold bell. That gold bell was created by putting down Army Painter Shining Silver and then a coat of the hardened leather over the top. And I think that's made a really nice, rich gold color that I will certainly be using on other miniatures. Next up we have one of the Olfen watch and I just wanted to point out here the tip of the spear. That is lead belcher and then the dark wood over the top and that has made a really grim rusty colour. I think it would have been too much to put that over all of the armour on this miniature but just for the tip of the spear I think it looks really really good. And overall I was really happy with how Halgrim and all of the Olfen watch turned out. Also from the Olfen watch, I wanted to show you this sergeant miniature because I did something different with the sword blade on this one. This is a lead belcher base with the Zealot yellow over the top and you get a sort of sickly gold color. Finally, I just wanted to show you this poor test miniature that I have here. This guy has been put through the ringer as he has been taking the brunt of all of my little experiments. The reason he is painted this way in the red is because I was tinkering with the idea of a very quick and easy way to paint up all of your miniatures from Cursed City using as few paints as possible in a way that was inspired by the artwork from the box cover. So this is just a black base primer and then a zenithal highlight with matte white and then a coat of the blood red speed paint over the top. And that's it, that's all it was. And while it's not an accurate recreation of the art style of the box art, 
you can see that it is something inspired by it. And if you don't like painting, but you really don't want to have just gray miniatures on the board, this is a nice quick way of doing it. A blast of black primer, a quick spray of white over the top, one coat of the blood red speed paint and done. Just pick a different color for your heroes and you have something that I think is going to be much more appealing than just those grays that you get out of the box. The other thing I wanted to show you on this test miniature is I did actually apply some non oil to him as a test to see how washes would react with the speed paint. The miniature was left for about three days before the wash went on and then I applied non oil all over the front of the vest, all down the front of the legs and around the back. And I didn't notice any reactivation. You can see the non oil has applied some shading over the top of the red. So while I still don't recommend you put a lot of washes and things over speed paints, I think if you leave them for long enough and then you are careful in how you apply it, again, use a light touch with your brush. Don't load up the miniature with washes. Probably do some tests first to make sure you're happy with it. You can probably get away with it. But anyway, that's all by the by. We were here for the Vargskar and here he is completely finished and I'm completely finished too. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.